Turn with me. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 through 11. Book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 1 through 11. Here's the word of God. Now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swear to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the man of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she's my sister, because he was afraid to say, she's my wife. He thought, the men of this place might kill me on, on account of Rebekah, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from the window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is, this to, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Amen. Um, it's kind of similar and sound familiar with us, right? Um, we'll see um, why. Um, let me ask you, um, how big is your vessel? Uh, when I was in um, college, I prayed that, um, Lord, I want to really embrace uh, this whole world. And then I want to be used uh, by you for the, for the kingdom of God. That means I need to embrace every kind of people. And I could share them the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I was asking about my vessel. That's why I shared this with you. I was kind of kind of frustrated because um, I thought that my vessel is not that big compared to my brothers. Because I was really uh, thinking about this. I want to really preach the gospel and I want to be used by God for the sake of God's kingdom. So I want to ask you, how big is your vessel? Let me ask you again. What bothers you? You know, during last week, what bothered you? People? Or some kind of occasions? Or happenings? Relationship with people? What bothers you and what bothers you? That's all about your vessel. If you're still struggling with or having conflict with certain kinds of people or certain kinds of, you know, realities, then you need to think about this. Am I be able to really embrace those people? Because I need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to, to the people of all nations. That's my concern and question to God. Lord, enlarge my vessel uh, 
so that I could really be used by you. I want to be a perfect tool for you to use for your sake. Um, enlarge, to enlarge our vessel, God uses trials. Um, God uses trials for his people to enlarge their vessel. That's what the Bible tells us. So we need to have totally uh, different perspective to see trials. Why? Romans chapter 8, there's nothing that that's, could separate us from the love of Christ. Right? Nothing. Then, why do we have these trials? What do we need to do with these trials? God is trying to enlarge our vessel because God has plan for you, for the future. If that is really true, then we need to allow him to enlarge our vessel through trials. That's why James 1, he said, if you face trials of many kinds, take it as a pure joy. If you really know how God works through these trials, then you would take it as pure joy. At least, we are not able to take it as a pure joy, but we're going to pray for that. Lord, let me really take it as a pure joy. Change my imprint. Change my perspective. Um, you see Abraham's life, right? We saw. God used a lot of trials to make, to mold Abraham as a man of faith. We have seen that, right? Isaac too. So we're going to see that uh, today. God is preparing the vessel of Isaac because we're going to see uh, next um, passages next, week, next Sunday. He wants to really bless Isaac. But the thing is, he needs to have enough vessel to take that blessing. He shouldn't be boast about what, what God has, you know, blessed him because of the blessings that he received. So he's, God is trying to prepare the vessel of Isaac through trials. So how letting, let us go through. Trials. If you look at verse, uh, chapter 25, Verse 21, Rebecca was barren for a long time. She couldn't have child for a long time. You know how painful it is? We might not know yet. But um, my close uh, friend, uh, you know, he couldn't have a child for eight years. I know how painful it is for him to go through. The pastor that I know, he waited for 12 years for the kid, for the baby. You know, think about eight years, 12 years, not having baby. Even though you want to have baby, you cannot have. It's really painful. She couldn't have the baby for a long time. It's kind of the same with who? Sarah. So, um, 
when I see those people who couldn't have a baby for a long time, they, you know, I saw them trying to, you know, make it happen in so many ways. But they ended up putting down every, uh, everything before God. God wants to uh, make us to put down everything. Can you control that? I don't think so. So she was uh, going through this kind of uh, long tunnel of pain. On top of that, there was a famine. Finally, they, you know, uh, Rebecca had a baby, like you know, Jacob and Esau, right? And right after that, they faced famine in the land. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. Sound familiar, right? God is using same scheme, same method to enlarge the vassals of his people. Same situation Abraham went through, and it's kind of same response. I was laughing at, you know, I was not laughing, but I was smiling <laughs> when I read um, uh, the passage. Same situation, same response. There was a famine in the land, and Abraham tried to go down to where? Egypt. And now, Isaac was trying to go down to Egypt. And uh, Isaac was surrounded by pagans. And Abraham was surrounded by pagans, right? He went down to Egypt, and then it was the Egyptians, right? And even Pharaoh. Same thing happened to Isaac. He was surrounded by pagans who do not know, who did not know who God is. So he was kind of afraid of you know, telling that the truth. She's my wife. If you think about it, it's all you know, his perspective. Like I said, uh, Rebecca couldn't have a baby for a long time. Uh, Isaac got married at the age of 40. And then he waited to have Jacob and Esau. And then you see how old Rebecca is going to be. She's really old. But Isaac th thought that she's really beautiful. That's why she was, he was kind of afraid of you know, telling the truth. And then he lied, just like his dad. If you are overwhelmed by fear, what you've learned from your parents will come out. That's in print. You know, we talked about imprints of Isaac. It was really great, right? promised birth and unforgettable imprints. He experienced that. He went through that. But at this, you know, situation and reality, he couldn't even help, you know, doing the same thing that his dad did. And then, because of that, he was rebuked. He was rebuked by the pagans. This is what's going to happen to us too. Even though God is using these trials to enlarge our vessel, if you do not know, then you will be scared by telling the truth or holding your faith 
in God, then you will be rebuked, rebuked by the pagan. So, uh, by you know, last Sunday, we really wish to be just like Isaac, right? He was a great person, right? He was a person of obedience, you know, to his dad. Even at the, the point of death, you know, he was obedient. He was a really great guy, but he's weak too. And he fell. So there's no exception for that. We might fall again. Don't worry about it. We are weak. We fell. And we're going to fall. But no matter what, through that, through these trials, God is enlarge our vessel and prepare our vessel. Whether we fail or not. Isn't that great? So we cannot get out of there. We cannot escape God's protection, God's providence. Even though we are weak and you know, we are fall down so many times, but we are in this absolute God's goal. God's absolute goal. So Isaac failed. Isaac fell down. But God worked everything for good. Then why? Same trial. Like I said, uh, to prepare the vessel. When you look at um, the book of Exodus, you know, um, and Joshua too, um, people of Israel got out of Egypt. And they experienced great exodus, work of God. But there, was a, there were 1.5 generation of exodus and second generation of exodus, right? And God made them to cross the Jordan River. Trials. Why? To prepare the vessel. Because you have something really great. You need to conquer the promised land, one by one, Canaanites, Jebusites, you know, seven tribes and 31 kings. You need to conquer them one by one. So you need to prepare the vessel. That's why you need to cross the Jordan River. So he is using these trials to enlarge our vessel, prepare our vessel. So what's happening, what's going on in your life is related to this. Take it as a pure joy. So um, God is kind of trying to um, have no fear against these trials or realities or problems, but fear God. Don't be afraid of these things because you are in my absolute goal. An absolute plan. Don't worry about it. Just fear me. Just rely on me alone. That's it. That's all I want. Think about it. Crossing the Jordan River, they didn't do anything. They just follow what? Instruction that God gave them. Right? And then God split the Jordan River. So that's what God wants. From us. You don't need to fear about this reality and trials because you are in my hands. Your life is in my hands. Don't worry about it. But fear me. Just keep my commandments. And then I saw uh, some kind of interesting point here. When you look at Abraham's life, when Abraham tried to go down to Egypt, God didn't say anything. He just allowed him to go down. 
And Isaac was kind of different, if you look at God appeared to him and then said, don't go down to Egypt. He interrupted. When you look at Jacob's life later on, he commanded him to go back to, uh, go down to Egypt. It all depends on a person. He deals with his people differently. But using this. He's counseling uh, Isaac personally. He's using sweet and gentle way. It's not fair. It is fair because it is all depends on who we are. What kind of personality we have. He is using reminder. Uh, it's not a, just you know cold some kind of information, but he is trying to explain about relationship. Isaac, let's look at what had happened to your you know father Abraham, and what had happened to you up to this point. What did I do? Who am I to you? So he's kind of uh, reminding him of the covenant. Covenant that he made with his dad, um, Abraham. If you look at verse 34, he's, he's kind of repeating the covenant once again. Covenant of seed. Right? Through your seed, through your descendants on earth, will be, all nations will be blessed. So, covenant of seed and covenant of the land. You know what? To you and to your offsprings, descendants, all these lands will be given to them. So, he is reminding the covenant of God. So, this is what I promised to your father. So, remember that. I'm not going to change it. You know, I made that covenant. I made that, you know, promise. So that's the relationship that, relationship that we have. I have with your father, you know, Abraham. At the same time, I'm reminding you, you are in that covenant. And then remember, for the first time, he heard about this covenant when? When did he hear about this for the first time? Written in the Bible. When? When he was about to be killed by his father. Remember that? And then he prepared the ram instead of Isaac, right? Right after that, right after they sacrificed the ram to God, God reminded Abraham about this covenant. So he remembered what had happened to him. Unforgettable. Imprint. Oh, ram was provided to me. And then we all confess that Jehovah Jireh, he provides. Time of famine, oh, he will provide. So he was reminded of this covenant. And then verse 5, he said, because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So previous uh, history, what kind of relationship that I had with your father uh, Abraham. So it's all about what? Relationship. Isaac. This is who I am. This is who you are. 
It's not about just information. Throw the information. Didn't you know about this? He's not saying that, but he is gently and sweetly, like, he's in explaining about the relationship. Do not fear about the reality. Do not fear about trials, but rely on me. Look up to me. And then he urged and comforting Isaac. Verse 2, he said, do not go down to Egypt. He gave him instruction. And then he said, stay in the land where I shall tell you. So that's why Isaac was trying to go down to Egypt, but he stopped at Gerar. Why? Because God told him to. So he just obeyed. His second nature, obedience. He was really good at that. So he obeyed God. That's why he stopped there. And then not only does, you know, instruction... But he said, promise, I will be with you. It's amazing. This is the first time God said this to his people in the scripture. This is the first time he's using, I will be with you. God didn't even use this word or phrase or sentence to Abraham. This is the first time he said, I will be with you, and I will bless you. So if you really know about this promise, the you know, presence of God, um, if you really know the value of this, you don't need to go down to Egypt, even though there are a lot of you know, uh, resources down there you know the value of Emmanuel, presence of God? Why you go down to, why do you try to go down to Egypt? No, not at all. You're not going to lose um, the presence of God. Not just be with them, but to be with them to bless. He promised this. I will be with you and I will bless you. Um, the joy is that he is present to bless and strengthen our faith and deepen our love and lift our burdens to answer our prayer. So he promised this. I will be with you, not just be with you, but to bless you. And strengthen your faith and enlarge your vessel. I will lead you, I will guide you. Just don't worry about it. So he uh, counseled Isaac personally when he was going through these trials. Um, this is work of. Jesus Christ. I'll be with you. This um, promise has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Even though you might fall down, you might go through a lot of trials, but here's the promise. And if you really hold on to, really enjoy His presence with you, Jesus Christ what he has done for you, even though you fail, but he was successful to overcome. So he said, just come to me. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will go through these trials a lot, but if you hold on to the promise of God, fulfilled through Jesus Christ, then you're not going to be shaken. And that's how God prepared our vessel.
after Jesus Christ, God promised to send who? The counselor. The counselor, the Holy Spirit. And he dwells in us, abides in us. And we are in him. So this is great counseling and get it, this is great comforts. So um, when God prepared uh, vassal of Isaac, he was uh, letting him to go through this, uh, all the trials. And then not only that, he came to him, like appeared to him, say, I will be with you and I will bless you. This is um, kind of goal that he has. He wants to make us to confess and pray. Keep me near to you. Please keep me near to you because you are the only one that I lean on to. You are the only one that I could really go to you, go to. So uh, if you really know the work of Jesus Christ and work of Holy Spirit, then he's the only one to go to. Through trials, you will realize this great realization and truth. And then you will end it up confessing and praying. Keep me near to you. So he's trying to train us to confess and realize that we cannot do anything without God. Okay? Nothing is possible without God. So you need to rely on me. You need to look up to me. That's the goal that he has. Through these trials, through this counseling, he wants, to, he wants us to realize and confess that I cannot do nothing. I can do nothing without you. So if you look at the you know, scripture, through the law, he set up the standards of God. Really high. Do you think you could, you know, uh, keep all the laws? No, not at all. So he set up the really high standards. And then let us realize and confess, oh, I cannot keep the you know, laws at all. Through trials, my weaknesses, my limitations. So high standards, my weaknesses. So through this, he's training us and uh, enlarge our vessels to confess, to realize, I can't do anything without God. If you really uh, get the conclusion to that, you know, realization and confession, that's blessing. He uh, tried to make us pray and look up to him only. Total surrender to him. And this is the only way to survive at the same time, to save. So... Um, And then, next Sunday, we're going to see how God blessed Isaac. And Isaac was ready to receive that blessing. If you cannot handle that blessing, then he's not going to give you. So before he blessed Isaac, he allowed him to go through this. And allow him to go through these trials. I'm not saying that it's, it's going to be really easy. Not at all. It's really painful for a long time. It's not one or two days or one or two weeks. 
years, she went through these painful moments for a long time. And the famine is not, it's not a joke, right? There's nothing to eat, nothing to drink. That's the famine. How can you survive? When you think about your children, Jacob and Esau, how can you feed them? As a parent, you need to think about how to survive. Right? But God is making us go through these trials. And then it depends on who you are. He's going to deal with you. Sometimes just, you know, allow you to go through, uh, go, to, go down to Egypt, or he might just appear to you in the middle of the way. That's why he stopped Gerar, which is borderline. This is promised land, and this is borderline. He stopped there. So he didn't uh, get out of the promised land. And, and God was successful to prepare the vessel of Isaac through this. So God is using this method to train you to enlarge your vessel. So uh, we need to open our spiritual eyes to see what God is doing in your life. Especially during this week, you will face various kinds of trials. It's all up to us how we look at it, how we take it. He knows your weaknesses. He knows our, you know, limitation. He will appear to us and counsel us. And then we ended up confessing. I cannot do anything without you. I was trying to make something happen. But I realized that I cannot do anything without you. And then I pray. Please, um, keep me near to you. That's all I want. I want to really get closer to you. Please keep me near to you. That's going to be our prayer. So God is, you know, kind of training us to make that conclusion, confession and prayer. Let's pray. After all, it's simple, but as a um, filthy sinners, that's not easy. But um, if we can really confess and pray in this way, that's all. That's all God wants. God called, Jesus called the people, disciples, why? To be with them. That's all. Oftentimes, we don't really do this. We think that, we tend to think that we could do something without God. We, could, we try to figure things out on our own. That's why God said, no. Do you think you are good enough? Do you think you are strong enough? I don't think so. Through the law, God was teaching us, you cannot do anything without me. Through the trials, see, did you see the limitation? Just come to me. And be with me. That's how I, how I created you. Um, this generation, this age is trying to um, kind of lead us and push us to the, that direction, self center. It's all I want. It's all about me. It's all about my emotion. It's all of my thoughts. It's all about my satisfaction. It's all of my, about me. God said, that's not the way that you need to take. It's all about God. It's 
all about the gospel. That's the only way for you to survive. Don't be deceived. Don't be manipulated by your enemy. Just look up to me. Then I will be with you. And I will bless you. Let's pray together.